I was aware of Morgan's work and I loved it. Uh, not only Will You Be My Neighbor, but many other ones, but also he did a documentary on a, um, an art movement in California in the 60s that I was around for uh, called The Cool School, and it featured uh, a friend of mine, Irving Blum, he's over 90 now, but he gave Andy Warhol the very first show in Los Angeles, his very first show, as a matter of fact. And um, so I had an appreciation, and then I guess you contacted me somehow. Yeah, I got word that Steve was maybe willing to do a documentary, and I immediately came to New York and <laughs> wanted to sit down with you. People ask me, so why did you do a documentary? I said, well, if not now, when? I had begun uh, cleaning out my memorabilia. You know, I had sold some things at auction to benefit the motion picture home. You know, I had clothes from movies and things like that. And I, it's things, frankly, I just didn't want to leave for my wife to deal with at some point, you know. So I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll do the escorting out of some of this stuff. So this is also a way to summarize um, a life that I, that I, in a way that I couldn't. It would take someone else to do it. I wrote a uh, memoir, an autobiographical memoir, and so much information came from people I contacted and they remembered things. I went, oh, oh yeah. So not only is archival material in your house, it's also in the minds of other people. As a documentarian, Steve saved so much great stuff. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he had his spiral notebooks from when he was 16 years old you know, things like that with his homework assignments sometimes. <laughs> you know, your philosophy notebooks from UCLA, things like that. Yeah. You know, it was a trove of Steve's whole I life. noticed there's some uh, misspellings in the, in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Weird, I spelled W-I-E-R-D. I, -E -R -D. I did know. notice that. Yeah. But, you know, you, you get a pass, except I was in college. <laughs> you invited me over for lunch at your house, and you wrote to me and said, uh, would salad be all right? And I said, yeah, salad would be great. Then you wrote to me again and said, would you mind salmon on the salad? And I thought that would be great. And I thought, surely Steve has somebody else to write to me to ask me about lunch. But <laughs> that actually was very indicative of who Steve is, which is... I find know, it's harder you... to delegate than just do it yourself. So, <laughs> you know. So, so the first meeting, um, we ended up talking about art and uh, all kinds of other things, not even that much about the film. And, um, and I remember at the end of that meeting, you kind of saying, well, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Steve has had the kind of career that touches so many different things I like. So I love the comedy, I love the film, I love the stand-up, but I love art and theater and novels, and that that fact that your life goes in these very different directions is something that was really resonant with me. Documentary shows a lot of things about your life and there's nothing I'm not proud of but there's things I wish were better you know in just terms of quality and material and um, so you do have to revisit uh, your failures as well as your successes just you know yeah, I mean, there's a moment in the second film when <clears throat> we're listening to cassettes of your old stand-up. Yeah. And you're so visibly uncomfortable doing that. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, I'm sure uh, there, were, there were many moments that made you squirm by kind of having yes, to... Yes, there is, because, you know, you know, when you're doing a documentary, you, you want everything to be so good. Everybody, everybody go, wow, that was really good. And then you're listening to something you know is, is in process you know, or not good, or not finished. And, you know, if I look back over my stand-up career, which is the first half, you know, I could probably count, you know, 25 shows that I would go, yeah, that was really good, you know, out of a thousand. I've always liked the character of uh, Roxanne because of uh, C.D. Bales, actually, um, because I was so busy I was so focused on writing the script and now it's like two days before shooting and I realized I had never thought about how I was going to play it. And, um, and I think I just decided on 
upbeat. <laughs> and sometimes that's all it takes. There are so many great characters you've had throughout your career. You know, I think maybe, maybe Bowfinger. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I that. But I, I had a great cast surrounding me. You know, Eddie Murphy, and <laughs> Christine Baranski, and so many people. Heather Graham. Yeah. You weren't so bad though. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the the joy of that movie was in the writing and working out the plot and making mm -hmm. the plot tick like a clock, and working with Frank Oz, the director. <laughs>